Uh, good morning or afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to introduce to you your um, final project for the year. This is a project that will receive several grades between now and the uh, last week of school, and it's also your final exam. So the final product is what's going to be your final exam grade. Uh, but there will be several grades in the interim, the first one being the floor plan itself. Okay, so we'll start, and we're going to go in chunks. We're just going to work on one thing at a time. So the first thing, probably the funnest part, is working on the floor plan. All right, so let me show you what it is that you have to do. I'm going to go to Schoology. And let's go to your course. Okay, so right here it says EYO Project Floor Plan. E -Y or EOY. EOY stands for End of Year. Um, and your objective is that students will design a floor plan based on predetermined specifications. Using AutoCAD design, a floor plan that meets the specifications on the file below. Arch, Arc 1 Beginner. Okay, so if I open that folder a little bit further, I will find some more instructions. Please follow these steps to get started. So just follow those. And here is your actual design, the, or what you're supposed to design. So I'll click on that download it and then open it okay so it's architectural beginning beginner problem statement and that's just what I named it um, okay so uh, this is going to be used to sort of tell you what you're actually going to design okay so first you have 17 square foot single family single story residence plus or minus 5% of 1,700 square feet. So you have to design this. It's got to be 1,700 square feet, but I do not expect you to get it, um, you know, bullseye on that 1,700. Uh, you can be a little bit less or you can be a little bit more. Find out for your own, on your own what is 5% of 1,700. Then you can take that, uh, that answer and subtract it from 1,700, and that will give you the smallest size of the design that you can make and then add that five percent to 1700 and that will be the largest uh size of the design okay so anywhere in that window is where you need to fall that gives you maybe a little over a hundred foot window uh, i'm not sure i haven't um, calculated five percent of 1700 but you can do that it's very easy get out your calculators and well do that Okay, um, further specifications here is with a two-car two garage, a two-car garage is typically around 500 square feet. The total footprint of your design will be approximately 2,200 square feet. So I guess somewhere in my figuring, I did actually calculate what is 5% of 1,700, and then I added the garage to that as well and come up with 2,200 square feet. So um, that's the footprint of your house. That's like the foundation of your house. That's not counting the living space, or that is not including the living space. That includes everything. It includes closets, garages, the living space as well. Um, but when we're actually calculating living space, when I say I want 1,700 square feet single family, residents, uh, that means I want 1,700 square feet of living space, not counting garages and closets and things like that. So that's your living space. This is your total space. Okay, 2,200 is your total space, including all of those things that I just talked about. And you can really go off of either one of those figures uh, to get um, your proper footprint size and just remember that of that 2200 square feet 500 square feet of it will be garage okay um, split gable and hip roof design with a 612 pitch okay when you get to the roof um, that's not something you want to start with that's probably going to be the last thing you're going to put on this floor plan okay so do everything else and when you get ready to do the roof I will come over and give you a lesson on how to do that, or I will record uh, one, uh, record a lesson that you can go in and look at. Uh, and you could do either one. If you would rather have me come by and sit down with you and show you, or if you would rather just watch the recording, that's perfectly fine, either one. I like to give options. 
Okay. Uh, next part of the specification is that our walls is a two by six stone for all exterior walls. And that is actual stone, not veneer. Okay. When I say actual stone, not veneer, um, there is a type of stone that is made that is cut very thin and they actually call it stone veneer. Although the stone we're putting on the wall is also a veneer. Okay, it's sort of one of those terms that get gets used in multiple ways, the veneer part. Okay, so it's going to be actual stone. Um, and it says you must add up the total of all materials that make up the wall to come up with the total wall thickness. And that's going to be on this down here below. Okay, so here you can really just forget about the actual stone not veneer just forget about that because down here i tell you the exact size of these stones natural stone finish equals four inches so you're going to take four inches and that, you're going to write that down then you're going to add the next line to it which is a two inch air gap between the stone finish and the structural wall okay so that's so far four plus two is six okay Vapor barrier is the next layer, but it is paper thin, so we do not count it into our total. Okay, so even though it is there, even though we have to acknowledge that it is there, and when we do our callouts for our material callouts on the wall, we have to make sure we make note of that, that we have a specific size vapor barrier. We don't add it when we're coming up with the thickness of our wall. Okay, so we don't add that to the thickness of our wall because it's paper thin. Okay, so so far I'm still at six inches. Uh, next one is I come up with a half inch of OSB sheathing. Okay, that's going to be the sheathing that goes on the structural part of the wall. Uh, that is actually the, the uh, solid barrier. Um, it is also uh, is our, um, I'm trying to think of the word, for some reason that it just will not count, bracing. That's the word I was trying to think of. So that is the bracing of our wall. The sheathing, we've got the structure. And this part you really have to pay attention to understand. We have a two by six wall structure, meaning we're gonna use two by six pieces of lumber to make the frame, the skeleton of the house. Uh, and this means uh, the wall is framed with a two by six lumber. The term two by six is nominal designation, meaning that we only call it two by six. Um, its actual dimensions are one and a half by five and a half. The dimension that we are concerned with now is the five and a half inch dimension. So that's what's going to affect the thickness of our wall. So we got four plus two is six. Um, we got a half inch, that's six and a half. We got uh, five and a half inches, so that's 11 and a half, 12. So we got 12 inches so far, is that correct? I may be wrong. Um, the dimension we are concerned with is, okay, finally we have the interior wall finish, which is gypsum wallboard. The gypsum wallboard will use one half inch thick. Add all of the wall material thickness together and come up with your total wall thickness and enter it here. Okay, so six, six and a half, six plus five is 11. Okay, but we got that half inch, so it's 11 and a half plus another half inch is 12. Okay, so we're at 12 inches and we're using half inch, so we're 12 and a half inches. Okay, so you would write right here 12 and a half inches. Make a note of that so you'll know how big your walls are. Keep this form. Don't just throw this form away or stuff it in your book bag where it gets all crumpled up in the bottom of your bag. This has the information on your design. You need to have this out with you, making notes as you go along as to what you have done, have not done, what you need to do, things like that, uh, or any sort of interpretation or whatever. So you might uh, need to further explain something in your own words, so you might write it out here next to the line. Okay, uh, so we got the gypsum wallboard on the interior. We're at, well, I think we're at like 12 and a half inch thick wall right now. Um, and then we come down to our interior walls. Now these walls are our exterior walls and they only go around the perimeter of the house. Then we come up with our interior walls. These are the walls that are gonna divide the different room spaces. Two by four interior wall. Okay, so it says right here that interior walls are much simpler than exterior walls. For an interior wall, we are only concerned with the three layers of material. The core layer, in this case, will be 2x4 lumber, which again is a nominal designation. Nominal meaning name only. 
The actual dimension of a 2x4 is 1.5 by 3.5. So the 3.5 dimension is the one that we need. And, the, and then add uh, a layer of half-inch gypsum wallboard to each side of this frame. Okay, this 2x4 frame. We're going to add half-inch gypsum wallboard to each side. So if it's 3.5 inches without any drywall, it's going to be 4.5 inches once we put the drywall on it. Okay, add the layers of material together and come up with the total thickness, write it down right here. Okay, so that's another note you need to keep up with. Two by six plumbing walls. I think we just uh, vaguely went over this, um, but basically anywhere that you have a plumbing fixture, such as a toilet, a sink, um, or anything like that, that's going to be uh, have pipes coming to it through the wall, then that wall needs to be made of two by six or one and a half inch by five and a half inch. So you'll have to make those walls a little bit thicker. Those will be on your bathroom walls, your kitchen walls. You don't have to worry about the exterior walls because they're already two by six. But any interior wall that has any plumbing fixtures attached to it with pipes coming through the wall needs to be a plumbing wall or a wet wall with two by six lumber as its frame. So it's going to be a little bit wider. Okay, so it's going to be five and a half plus an additional inch of drywall so you're looking at six and a half inches thick right there um, and put I put a further explanation right here but I just kind of went over that but just read over that again if you wish um, okay it's gonna have four total bedrooms with two by six closets now that doesn't mean uh, made of two by six lumber look very carefully at the way i written i have written that it says two foot by six foot now a two by six because it is a nominal designation meaning in name only it just gets this two by six without any unit of measure markings outside of the number but here with the four total bedrooms and the closets two feet by six feet that's going to be your actual measurement so Two feet deep by six feet wide. That's what the bedroom closets must have or must be. Okay, one of these rooms can be a flex room or an office. So one of those four rooms can be a flex room or office, or you can just make it a bedroom like all the other ones. Then you have the master bedroom. Okay, master bedroom is one of these four. Okay, four total bedrooms. One of those happens to be a master bedroom with a full bath and walk-in closet. The master bedroom is part of the total count of bedrooms mentioned in the previous bullet point. That's what I, I just kind of explained. But your master bedroom and your walk-in closet, your walk-in closet is going to be bigger than two inch or two foot by six foot. I'm going to leave it up to you to Google that. Um, you know, all you have to do is Google what is the dimensions of a walk-in closet. Okay, and you should find many examples and just pick one to follow. Okay, um, kitchen with dining area. So the kitchen should have enough room to accommodate a breakfast table or a bar. Okay, not a full dining area, just a breakfast table or a bar. However, on the next bullet, we say that we do want a living room and a formal dining room. So we'll have two places to eat. Uh, one's going to be a formal dining room that is separated from all the other rooms in the house. It may even have some privacy walls included. Um, and it'll have a dinner table in it and all that kind of stuff. But that would be for formal dining. Okay, uh, The breakfast bar dining area the breakfast bar or the small table in the kitchen is yeah just for those quick lunches quick breakfast or what have you you know maybe even dinner you never know but you are going to have a formal dining room for those special occasions and of course a living room okay you'll have a living room as well uh expect changes okay i put on here a note that you will not receive any change orders on this pro project i do want you to be aware of them however in architecture 2 you will work on projects that will include after the fact changes so uh you might be working on a problem uh, designing a house and then i come in and say okay instead of 1700 square feet we're going to make it a tw uh, 2000 square feet okay so you'll have to go in and you'll have to make those changes to your drawing but i'm not doing that to you right now that will happen in architecture 2. Uh, next is your covered rear porch with sitting space so you need to think about a rear porch giving it enough room uh, it's going to have a roof over it uh, but giving it enough room for some sitting and possibly a small uh, garden table for eating and things like that uh, and then finally the dimensioning part of it 
Title and scale of drawing, one quarter inch equals one foot. You should always be working on a floor plan in one quarter inch scale. Include the north arrow. Dimension all interior walls to center of studs. Dimension all exterior windows and doors to their centers. You must follow all dimension standards as discussed and practiced throughout the year. Remember, four foot, six foot, and eight foot. Okay, that is the distances that we put those different dimensions from the house. So the four foot line, the one that runs out four foot from the house, that one has your doors and windows. The six foot has your major walls, all the walls that connect to the exterior wall. And then the eight foot line is going to have your overall dimension. This is where you stop before going on to the next part of the assignment, which would be a foundation plan. And I will give you more information on that later. Uh, we may not have enough time to get to this part of it, but we will see. Okay, you work on the floor plan. When you finish that floor plan, we will go on from there. Uh, but a lot of these are going to be um, additional assignments after you get done with that floor plan. Okay, so don't worry about these down here. Just go down to far as dimensioning and get that floor plan done, and that's going to be the first phase. Now, just to tell you a little something about this problem statement. Uh, all the, tar uh, the words that you see in italics usually are not included on a problem statement. All the regular lettered words are included. So this is typically what you would have to do. You would have to make a lot of assumptions and a lot of stuff you should already know that when I say two by six, it doesn't mean it's actually two inches by six inches. Okay, things like that. Um, so you'll get used to it over time. Um, but that's why I call this a beginner because I made it with a lot of explanation involved, but a lot of this explanation would not be included on a typical problem statement. Okay, so uh, be aware of that. Okay, now this is our problem statement. This is what you're supposed to do. We have one other document that we are supposed to use as well. Okay, and let me find that one. That is this one right here. Floor plan evaluation form. Okay, what that is, that's how you're graded. That's basically your rubric for this design. So you create this design, you include all that stuff that is on here. Okay, just like it says for you to do. And then, let me minimize that. Go here to floor plan evaluation form. And you should be looking at both of these documents as we're going. Okay, so this is your evaluation form. Okay, you fill out all this information up here. This is all the specifics. Okay, exterior walls. Meets dimensional and material requirements according to specifications. Wall bracing must be indicated. So anything on here you have a question about, you need to ask. Don't just sit there and think you know what's going on when you really don't. Or don't be shy. Don't say, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to turn it in like it is to see if I got it right. No, don't do that. Ask questions. But this has all the, the criteria that your design must meet. Uh, with the exterior walls, the interior walls, the spacing, doors, windows, room tags, annotations, dimensions, okay, and furniture, casework, plumbing fixtures, utility space, and general notes. Overall uniformity and completion. All right, so the way this form works is you go over it to make sure you meet all of these uh, requirements, and you can grade yourself right here. Okay, grade yourself. What grade do you think you should get on those sections? It has the point value right here. So exterior walls, point value, six points. So if you think you did a fantastic job on exterior walls, right there um, have someone else also look at your uh, drawing and they can put their score over here in this column okay so any that could be anybody that could be another teacher that can be your parent uh, that could be another student or anybody like that okay that part isn't totally required uh, but if you really want to know maybe how you stand up how you think of your drawing compared to how someone else thinks of your drawing um, you can have them put that information right there. This last column, of course, is for me, the instructor score. 
All right. So I go in and I put what I think your your uh, score should be, and I am very particular. Okay, I'm very particular. Um, coming down here to the very bottom, there's this one. It says overall uniformity and completion instructor discretion, 20 points. Okay, so I'm going to look at your overall uh, uh, project, your overall design, and see what I think about it. Uh, is it neat? Um, have you taken care of all the little bitty details and things like that? You know, like are your wall lines, have you cleaned up your wall joints? Um, are your um, dimensions spaced appropriately? Is the text readable and everything else? Okay, and I'm going to put use that as to my discretion. Now you can put your points down here as well, but I'm definitely going to put mine right here as well. Okay, and then of course here are just total points possible, point deductions, and your grade. All right, so that takes care of that form, okay? That's your floor plan evaluation form. That is your rubric. So look over that carefully and also look over the problem statement very carefully. Um, typically, you don't have to use this floor plan evaluation form until you have finished it or until you think you have finished it. And then you go over this and making little checks and say, okay, um, such as on interior walls, do my interior walls meet dimensional and material requirements according to specifications, yay or nay? All right, that's all, all there is to that. Okay, so in the end, this is going to be the form that determines your grade. Okay, that's what this is. Again, if you have any questions on anything, please ask. All right, so that's it for your introduction to this project. Uh, so get to work on that. That goes into AutoCAD. This is based on the uh, sketch that you guys made earlier in the month that I had you make uh, right as we came back from spring break, I believe it was. Um, but that's what it's based on. Not that you have to stay with that. Not that you have to, to design exactly what you drew on that piece of paper. That piece of paper was just to get the thought process going. That, that hand sketch gets the thought process going. Okay, and then the computer, when you get there, that's when you're finalizing everything. All right, so that's it for this video, just the explanation. I'm going to have some other videos to kind of help you out along the way. Um, and you need to really get used to trying to figure out things on your own. But if you just can't do it, please ask.